What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and sorry if my voice sounds a little bit off, I'm just getting over a pretty nasty cold. We're going to jump back into the Tal'Dorei Campaign Guide Reborn coverage, this time talking about the Circle of the Blighted Druid, the only druid that appears there, and this is your sort of blight necro druid, which is something I've been looking for in 5th edition. Before we dive into that though, I did want to talk to you about the sponsor for today's video, HelloFresh. Now if you're not familiar with HelloFresh, uh, they're a meal kit delivery service that will bring a just a box full of food, all pre-portioned and ready to go right to your doorstep. They're actually nice enough to send over a box uh, of several different meals to me that I got to pick out, which is something you get to do when you sign up for HelloFresh. And I actually went and cooked one of the meals myself. So I'm gonna cut to myself over in the kitchen, working with my son to start prepping. Uh, we made some chicken ramen. Uh, we're in the kitchen. HelloFresh sent us all of this awesome food. We're going to be making some ramen, we got all our ingredients cut out, we got our water boiling, uh, and then we're just going to get into the process here of making and mincing up all our garlic, and then we'll see how it goes. Here it is. We'll plate it up. And one of the best parts is, I just had myself and my wife, my two kids, with that one meal, and take a look at this. Still plenty of leftover for at least either seconds probably lunch tomorrow, maybe even another meal, uh, depending on how much you want to put in it. I'll also put up an image of one of the beef dishes that my wife had made, which was also really good. So again, part of the reasons that I like HelloFresh is as you know, I'm strapped for time. It's my big, my least uh, resource that's most valuable. So anything I can do that will cut that time down is a necessity for me. HelloFresh removes the need to look up a recipe, removes the need to figure out what portions I need to do, and then also the trip to the grocery store, it solves all of that. Everything's all prepackaged and nice little packages for what you need. It spells it all out for you, gives you the prep time, the cook time, and you can just go forth and make it. I actually do enjoy cooking, but the hardest part for me with anything in my life is actually getting started on any of it. So HelloFresh removes all of that by just giving me a box to go make. So, HelloFresh was nice enough to hook me up with a code. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use the code POGNERDI16. That's POG, P-O-G, NERD, the letter I, 16, for up to 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts across six HelloFresh boxes plus free shipping. And those gifts could be anything from appetizers to desserts to premium recipes. So thank you again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video, and let's go ahead and dive into the Tal'Dorei Campaign Guide Reborn. So here it is on screen. You can see the Circle of the Blighted right here in front of us, as well as uh, Carmelia Spring Shower, the uh, mascot, if you will, for the Circle of the Blighted Druid. And it does something that I've said before that I very much enjoy, which is taking an existing mechanic and tweaking it. And I do think that that is a good idea, right? Take your bardic inspiration, make it something different. Take your wild shape, do something different. Let's see what it is. Let's see how it stacks up in the current meta. And then is it worth your time? Overpowered? What's so Whatever. Defile ground at level two. Uh, let's see. You can use a bonus action to corrupt a patch of land or an area of water in a 10-foot radius centered on a point within 60 feet of you. It lasts for a minute. Uh, it's difficult terrain for creatures that are hostile to you. Additionally, when a creature in the area takes damage from an attack or spell for the first time on a turn, it takes an extra D4 necrotic damage. You can move this patch of corruption up to 30 feet as a bonus action. Flying creatures are unaffected. It's defile ground, not defile air. Starting at 10th level, the area of your defile ground increases to a 20-foot radius. Additionally, the extra damage goes up to a D6 at 10 and a D8 at 14. And it is once per short or long rest. It's a pretty simple little ability, but I do enjoy it. It is a difficult terrain, which is nice battlefield control and a little bit of extra damage. The first time a uh, creature in the area takes damage from it uh, for the first time on a turn. So it's on a turn, not on its turn. So uh, on, oh, I guess it's on a turn. So I think that's meant to be, it only happens once, but it says the first time on a turn. So if it's my turn and I attack them, that's the first time on a turn. The next turn, that is another turn, it will be the first time on that turn. I believe it's meant to only be the first time, period. But because it says on a turn, it means like you can't put this on them and then hit them three times with three attacks and stack up that damage. So it might just be a, a debuff applied once a turn, which is still pretty powerful, and that will add up over time. The only thing that doesn't really fit in the current landscape that we see is this 
short or long rest recharge. Wizards of the Coast seems to be, not to say that that's right or wrong, but Wizards of the Coast seems to be moving away from short rests almost entirely. Then we get Blighted Shape at level 2. Uh, you can take on a spooky form, essentially. Uh, you gain proficiency and charisma intimidation, and when you are transformed for your Wild Shape feature, you gain a plus 2 to AC, as your gnarled spines protrude from your body, your beast form also gains dark vision with a radius of 60 feet or an additional 60 feet if it already has it. Now, I don't particularly love this because all this does is take your beast shape and make it better. Now, you are still hard limited to this challenge ratings associated with beast shape or wild shape as it already stands. Uh, this blighted shape is a cool thematic piece but all it is basically doing is anything that any other druid would be, that's not a moon druid, would be shifting into, you are just better at that than everything else because you're going to get a bonus to AC and dark vision. Granted, it's only a bonus to AC and dark vision and your hit points are still low. So maybe I'm really, this is not a huge sticking point for me. So I guess it's okay. Um, I probably would have focused a little more on making Defile Ground maybe a little stronger than the Blighted Shape, but again, the aesthetics are there, so I get it. Call of the Shadow Seeds at level 6. When a creature that is not undead or a construct takes damage within the area of your Defile Ground feature, you can use your reaction to summon a Blighted Sapling in an unoccupied space within 5 feet of that creature. You can direct the Sapling to make an attack against the creature within 5 feet of it as part of this reaction. The sapling then acts on your initiative, obeying your verbal commands. Uh, the blighted sapling remains in your service until it's reduced to zero hit points, until the end of your next long rest, or until you summon another sapling. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus back on a long rest. The sapling uses the statistics in the stat block, which we'll take a look at. So it's a medium plant creature, 10 plus proficiency bonus and natural armor, hit points equal to twice your druid level. Some resistances, vulnerability to fire, kind of makes sense for a plant. Blind Sight, it does have, oh, it says multi-attack when it hits level 14, but it has a claw attack that does 2d4 plus proficiency bonus piercing damage. That's not a small amount of damage for a free creature. The other thing that's weird is it does act on your initiative order, it said. It acts on your initiative, obeying your verbal commands. So it sounds like there's no, it doesn't take you anything to command it, is my understanding. When a creature takes damage in your Defile Ground, you can use your reaction to summon it. It acts on your initiative and obeys your verbal commands. I would have liked to have seen this built out a little bit more, possibly to fit more with the lines of the pet mechanics that we've seen. I also feel like summoning of the Blighted Sapling seems like something that would be an ideal use of your Wild Shape. Potentially, instead of proficiency bonus times per long rest, perhaps you should get access to the Blighted Sapling at level 2, but it's a way you can summon it by using your Wild Shape instead of shaping into an animal. Or perhaps Defile Ground should be a, you know, you can use your Wild Shape instead, similar to the Spores Druid. Maybe that's why they didn't want to do it that way. But instead of Wild Shaping, you can summon this area of Defile Ground. I don't know. That's my thoughts on it. Foul Conjuration at 10th level. Uh, any beast, fey, or plant uh, summoned by your spells uh, gain the following traits. They get immunity to necrotic and poison damage and the poison condition. And when they are reduced to zero hit points, it explodes in a burst of toxic mulch and fetid viscera. Each creature within five feet of the exploding creature must make a con save equal to your spell save DC or take necrotic damage based on the table below. So it's based on challenge rating. As an action, you can also cause a summoned creature to explode, immediately killing it. If it has no challenge rating, it does a number of D6s of necrotic damage equal to your proficiency bonus, which seems pretty strong. One or higher, a number of D8s of necrotic damage equal to the creature's challenge rating. Half, uh, on D it's very weird scale. So if it's a D4, it's a D4. If it's a quarter, CR a quarter or lower, it's a D4 necrotic damage. If it's a CR half or lower, it's a D6 necrotic damage. If it's one or higher, it's a number of D8s equal to the challenge rating, creature's challenge rating. Or if it has no challenge rating, it's a number of D6s equal to your proficiency bonus. I don't know many creatures that have no challenge rating. Because a lot of them, it says a quarter or lower. So the difference between a quarter or lower and no challenge rating? Ah. Because there's plenty of things with challenge rating zero, which I would argue is a quarter or lower. 
but is no challenge rating, just it doesn't have one typed in there, because there's very few that do, unless that meant CR0. If it meant CR0, then obviously you should do the summon whatever animal and summon as many challenge rating zero creatures as you can have, and then blow them all up, because that's way better than actually using them. So that is a little funky. I'd like to know the thought process behind the no challenge rating uh, one, because obviously this looks way better to use this, because even the this, oh, the Blighted Sapling has no challenge rating. Is that literally designed just for the Blighted Sapling? And why doesn't it have a challenge rating? That seems odd. So I guess that's so that you can blow up your Blighted Sapling. That must be literally why it's there. I would have just given it a challenge rating and then removed the confusion. Uh, all right, and then at level 14, your skin grows ashen, your eyes darken completely. Spikes and jagged spurs emerge from your body, giving you resistance to necrotic damage and a plus two to AC. Additionally, whenever you start your turn within the radius of the corruption created by your Defile Ground feature, you can use a bonus action to gain temporary hit points equal to your proficiency bonus. I actually love the 14th level ability. It's a nice kind of capstone to the class. A little bit of resistance to necrotic damage, plus two to AC. I like the little bit of, I might have changed the, uh, proficiency bonus seems pretty imbalanced with what Wizards of the Coast is doing as far as the temp HP gain. I don't know if I would have made it a bonus action to gain the temporary hit points. Considering that, I probably would just give that to you at the start of your turn, or if you start your turn in the area of your Defile Ground feature, you gain temporary hit points equal to your proficiency bonus. I would remove the action completely. But the other thing that I kind of have a bummer with this is Foul Conjuration is real strong. I mean, I know that, you know, necrotic and poison damage, or poison damage is pretty common, but you're almost, you kind of have things that make you better at wild shaping in some aspects than most other druids and the fact that your wild shapes get darkness or dark vision or extended dark vision and a bonus to ac you're kind of also a little bit better at summoning than summoning druids because your summoned creatures have flat out immunity to two common damage types and a common condition as well as the ability to be exploded for additional damage now let's say ignoring the no challenge rating thing um, let's look at, I think it's, what is it, Conjure Animals, right, is one of those. Uh, Conjuring Spells is a pretty low-level one. It's, I think, level three. Conjure Animals is a third-level spell. Cast at third level, you can summon eight beasts of a challenge rating a quarter or lower. That's not upcasting it or doing anything funky. So that's at level five, so well before you have this ability, you could summon eight creatures of challenge rating a quarter or lower which would each, if exploded, do, uh, or, sorry, or four of challenge rating one half, right? Uh, they would explode um, and do a D4 damage each. So casting Conjure Animals at, uh, at third level, summoning quarter or lower challenge rating creatures, you could have, in theory, on a turn, eight creatures all attacking, and then on your turn as an action, blow them all up, and do 8d4 necrotic damage um, in a 5 foot radius around them. Now they also have the benefit of even, it's kind of almost more, more worth it to summon the weaker creatures because they'll get the explosion even if they're killed and this could be a great opportunity to allow your DM to want to focus fire on the minions to get them out of there because they're just taking them down by a thousand cuts. It also potentially saves you survivability wise by having a attack that would have came for you go for your minion but then the minion blows up so it's actually very good as far as summoning goes and like i said at 10th level you have access to what fourth fifth level spells at that so you could upcast uh and i'm looking at this casting with a fifth level slot when you cast a spell with higher level slots twice as many with a fifth level slot it says so if you cast <laughs> yeah if you use a 5th level spell slot, you could summon 16 challenge rating 1 quarter or lower animals. So you could be looking at 16 d4 explosive necrotic damage. Um, it does, however, not allow you to choose your allies uh, to be immune from this explosion. So, uh, also, all of the summoned creatures are immune to the necrotic explosion. So you don't have to worry about them accidentally killing themselves with this explosion. It just damages the creatures. So, you know, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. 
it has some really good thematic it's thematic i can't argue the theme of it it is very much on point with the sort of necrosis blight concept i'm on board with that some of the abilities seem pretty weak some of them seem really strong and all combined together i think it kind of edges more on the op side because it it does something that i don't particularly enjoy which is it seems like it's kind of a better better x than whatever the original like it's kind of almost a better it's not a better moon druid than the moon druid but it's better than the other druids at being you know at being a wild shaping creature you know druid um and i don't know if it's technically better than the shepherd druid as far as summoning goes but it has a lot going for it and then it has its other abilities like its aoe uh difficult terrain damage boosting for not just you but the other party members as well, the summoning of the blighted sapling, and then the flat-out survivability that you get later on. It might be edging more into the OP territory, but I'm curious what you think. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you to my patrons over on Patreon uh, for supporting me and the channel. And then once again, a huge shout-out to uh, HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check all those links in the description to get some cool stuff and use the code POGNERD16 to get all of the freebies and whatnot. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all so much for watching. I haven't done this in so long. <laughs> and I'll see you next time.